Good morning guys, welcome back to another video, another lawn care vlog. Decided to do a lawn care vlog instead of a behind the scenes. We've actually been really slow on overgrown properties and I didn't even do one this week, uh, but I do have some videos in store. Man, I spent probably 10 hours driving around my city and some other cities and could not find a single one. I could not find one that was not dried out. All of them are super dry right now. We've been dealing with a lot of heat waves and we've ha we have another one coming soon. We did get a few rainfalls, but uh, man, it's, it's just been super dry lately. So uh, it's been harder and harder to find overgrown properties. So I probably have to go and find some overgrown shrubs or something, something else to do a video on. But approaching my favorite gas station because I am low on fuel and uh, the reason why this one is my favorite is because they sell ethanol free fuel and uh, it is pretty nearby my house um, so I have to refuel my truck real quick and then we'll hit the road we made it to the storage I want to give a big shout out to farmers defense for sending me some sleeves and a sun hat that's uh, uh, I really do appreciate you guys uh, everyone that sends me gifts really do appreciate it I got to give a shout out to my my the people that send me gifts I also want to give a big shout out to all the kids that send me letters and drawings and paintings and all that you guys are a true blessing it's really nice to see that in the mailbox from time to time so check it out y'all the BR 700 has been laid to rest poor BR 700 still works but it doesn't get used a lot now, uh, especially with the summertime. And especially since now, I got the good old Toro Revolution 60 volt commercial blower mounted on my equipment defender rack. For the longest time, I couldn't figure out how to, well, actually, I knew how to do it. I guess it was just a lazy me. Uh, didn't want to make simple adjustments to the tube holder and to this bar uh, holder here, or to the uh, backpack part. Uh, you had to make an adjustment in the back to make it fit, but hey, long story short, I got it to fit, and now I use it all the time to blow off properties. However, will I sell my BR700? Probably not, I wanna keep it, uh, but I am slowly converting to battery equipment. Now, why choose battery over gas? Well, guys, in my opinion, in my honest opinion, gas is just overkill, especially something like this. Gas, in my opinion, is overkill if you are just doing weekly lawn care. If I didn't have a backpack battery blower, I'm, I'm dead honest with you guys, this is probably 80% of what I use on my properties. Handheld blower. Because when you are mowing small properties, that don't require a lot of blowing when you're dealing with really dry grass clippings that need to be blown off from sidewalks and driveways handheld blower all the way and if you can go battery you don't use a handheld blower a lot right but when you need to use a backpack blower let's just say for fall cleanups or anything that's wet yeah of course you're going to go with a gas but how often does it um, rain in your area if it rains a lot, it's just things that you have to consider. If it does rain a lot, if you're dealing with rain probably every single week, I'd go with a gas backpack blower because yes, a battery backpack blower is stronger than a battery uh, leaf blower, even some gas leaf blowers like handheld leaf blowers. Uh, this is of course more powerful than let's just say a steel BG86 uh, or BG56 or BG50. Um, However, it is definitely not as powerful as the BR700. So I enjoy it. Again, for the properties that I service currently, a battery backpack blower is more than enough. It does actually handle a little bit of wet material. Um, however, for like major fall cleanups, gas all the way. I mean, there's no comparison. So when I said that I'm not laying it down to rest completely, I'm not gonna sell it. That's why I said that, because I'm still going to be using it. So when you're in the market for a blower, whether it be a handheld blower, gas, a battery handheld blower, a battery backpack blower, or a gas backpack blower, 
consider these things. Consider how much power do you actually need? And if you don't need a lot of power, you might get away with a handheld blower, maybe even a, ba a battery blower because, and think about the efficiency as well. Battery blowers, all you have to do is make sure that the battery is charged. You aren't going to really charge your unit a thousand times. If you're a homeowner, it's gonna take you quite some time to charge it over a thousand times. If you're a lawn care guy, if you're constantly using it, yeah, you're going to uh, charge you know, your batteries uh, a lot and that will reduce your life of the battery. So over time, I don't know the time, I haven't used battery products for over five years um, and I haven't charged my units over a thousand times, but over time your batteries will, uh, I, I don't know if degrade is the right word, but they will start losing just like cell phones. You know, you start losing your cell power and the amount of juice that it can actually uh, hold. And then your batteries or your whatever cell phones start dying quicker. So it's just something to consider. With battery, uh, you have to replace your batteries sometime, whenever that time might come. Uh, with gas, you know, gas are pretty much reliable. I mean, you can have an engine run forever as long as you do the correct fuel mixture and take care of the motor tune it up uh, but that is another expense for you so again there's advantages there are disadvantages we can talk all day people can write all the stuff you, they want in the comment section i mean if you know of some advantages disadvantages that you that i might have not shared with you guys please leave them in the comments down below i'd love to hear your opinion on gas versus battery backpack blowers and held held hand held blowers all right I know I talk a lot. I just love to share my opinion with you guys. And uh, this is the behind the scenes channel where we, where we do a lot of talking and equipment. We show a lot of equipment and do a lot of comparisons. So um, I will go ahead and go to my first property and we'll start, um, we'll start mowing the property and then edging and trimming and all that. And I'll show you some footage of this you know, Toro 60 volt a battery backpack blower all right those of you that have been watching me for a long time you guys know this is my favorite property oh hold on listening to a podcast shout out to cameron long care life missouri podcast um we finished mowing and trimming we haven't edged yet and we haven't blew off i'm going to show you guys that here in a little bit but i don't know if i've ever showed you me mowing with my toro 52 inch multi-force Look at this gate, it looks so small. 52 inch deck, we barely squeeze in. It's just incredible. The first time I got the mower, I tried it on this property. I thought it wouldn't fit. I thought it was impossible, but it actually does fit. It's just, we're probably like one inch away from hitting each post, whichever way we're closest to. So anyways, I got the GoPro on. I'm gonna switch camera angles, enjoy the mow and enjoy the edge and also enjoy me blowing with the toro 60 volt like look at all this easy stuff all we just gotta do is blow it back and the toro does a wonderful job we don't need to get the big heavy br700 out right so all right let me uh switch camera angles and show you guys some mowing footage <laughs> Just messed up my stripes. Oops, it's okay, we fixed it. Get this grass dumped. Put the bagger away since we're done with it. And kind of fix our tarp. And why do we have a tarp? Well, when we go to the dump, all we have to do is drop the tailgate, drag the tarp, go on the other side, and dump the grass. Really easy. It does get challenging when it's super full or super heavy.
throw the dry wrap over the trimmer. Take the battery cover out. And get a fresh one. All right, fresh battery. Let's get to edge. So I usually use setting one and hopefully the camera catches some of the edging footage here. Try to adjust it accordingly. So yeah, I leave my batteries in the trimmers. However, what just dropped? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I throw dry wraps on it just so that nobody steals my battery. And it protects the plastic that sound oh that's the sprinkler system i was having i'm still listening to it but i'm like triple tasking right now listening to a podcast talking to you guys <laughs> and uh and trying to hear my surroundings gotta love it all right dry wrap on this toro 60 volt fits pretty snug definitely snug around this tube blower housing we're just gonna set it here. We're gonna install it. And I don't think I charged my battery. Oh, I can see Okay, well, let's see. Three, three bars on that guy. Three bars in this guy. We're gonna take the right one out since we have, we wanna run one. It's pretty heavy when you run two 10 amp batteries. Now you can find the weight online if you'd like, but they're pretty heavy. That's why I work on. Go ahead and close it. Of course, got to have a Phil's Lawn Care sticker if you want one. They're available in my store. Um, if you have noticed, maybe not. Maybe some of you haven't, but. If you run one and you're looking at my tube and it's short, I removed, let me see if the camera's catching this, yeah. So I removed the middle portion. The middle portion is like this much. I personally like shorter tubes. And the only thing, well, one of the things that I don't like about this Toro Revolution backpack blower is it, it doesn't have a telescoping tube or adjustable tube. It's a fixed tube length. So what I had to do is remove the middle section. The middle section is in my toolbox. Um, and I just put the this end tip. It's removable. And it's not supposed to be this way. However, I have been like a shorter tube. So that's just how it's gonna have to be <laughs> for me to actually use it to my liking. See, it just blows the grass with ease, no issues at all. There's even a turbo button, look at this. If I hold it, you'll hear the sound and power difference, ready? Of course, that's more for, you know, lightly heav uh, heavier objects, um, wet grass, maybe a little bit wet, maybe a little bit wet leaves, but um, I seldom have to use the turbo button unless you're doing like dirt or something, but. Yeah, let's continue. Kind of sounds like it's dying. Ah, 
I didn't get it all. And it is a variable trigger, so depending on how hard you hold it will determine the amount of power you give it. So very low, let go, it's super low. And if you squeeze it all the way, it's the most powerful. All right, heavier stuff here. We're gonna turbo mode it, ready? There we go, nice and clean. Nice, clean, edged up, bagged up lawn. Just how I like it. Most important, just how the customer likes it. So yeah, sorry guys, I had my ISO turned down really low and I have a, um, a, uh, a filter on here that reduces the amount of um, exposure, but my ISO is really low, so I had to turn it on to auto. So I don't know if the footage is ruined. I don't know if I'll include the mowing footage, but we did. if I don't, we did mow the yard, my favorite yard. We did mow the backyard. I showed you guys squeezing in with the mower and um, showed you a little bit of edging footage and also the blowing with the Toro 60 volt. So again, you know, I like it, it's efficient, it's really nice. Um, as long as you keep the batteries charged, there's no issues. If you have a power station in your truck, that's even a better benefit for, to you because you can charge your batteries while you are servicing these properties, going to and fro from property to property. Uh, you can have one battery always completely charged and full ready to go So as soon as you run out of a battery you have one ready to go. So it's pretty cool battery equipment It's uh, it's getting there. It's getting there. So it's just not as powerful as gas however Some of the stuff is more powerful than gas, but uh, you know They have their ups and downs It's getting somewhere it is it is getting somewhere. So it's just the future of our technology everything is going battery and gas still being used however some states are eliminating it so anyways um off to the next one here we go man i still haven't showed you me fully mowing these two properties one over there that one has actually been having some issues i'll show you here in a minute uh, this one i just finished edging up and now we got to take the blower out and blow it Switched over to the sun hat real quick, man. I got super hot with the snapback. Oh wait, what am I doing? Got super hot with the snapback. Hey, beautiful weather. Um, yeah, it's hot. Yeah, humid, hot to breathe. But thank you, Lord, for the huge maple trees here in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, I'm gonna get you on the GoPro chest mount and do a little bit more blowing action since this um, Episode this video more revolving around the blower um, get you on the chest but it's, um, Charging so, turn off my Power inverter And switch cameras Still using that same battery that I think was dying. <laughs> you know what? Actually, I haven't even checked. Let's check how much juice is left. It says two bars. Well, two bars, gotta be two bars. Hopefully we won't have to switch it out with the other one. I don't think so. Anyways. Finished edging, you might see them. Well, let me blow them off. You'll see the edge is a lot crispier when I blow it off.
when it's windy out, like it is a little bit windy today, stuff blows everywhere. And sometimes you can't control what goes out on far on the street. So yeah, we didn't edge this property. Uh, this is where we've been having a lot of issues lately. Both lawns kind of slope in and um, it stays really wet right here. I think at one point, I don't know if they got it fixed or not, but I told the customer to turn off this whole zone because I think there was a leak here. See the ruts? Super squishy. I had to stop mowing this customer's backyard for like two, maybe three weeks. And I just finished mowing it. It was pretty overgrown. And as you can see, I, I did bag up. I triple cut it, or I triple cut it, double cut, side discharge, and then third mow was with my bagging system. I just have to blow these and disperse them around the lawn. Stays nice and wet here. Alright, I think that's it. I did side discharge some on the fence. Had to blow off the fence. So. Uh, yeah, I think we're done with blowing. Go on, move on to the next property. All right, I was going to film myself use the blower on a few more properties, but some things came up, so today is the following day. I just wanted to say a few more things about the Toro 60 volt battery backpack blower. And one thing I didn't mention was the, the main reason why I took off this extension on the blower now still can be ran if you want to use one tube however you got to remember that it's going to be kind of loose a little bit so it's going to wobble around uh, because it doesn't fit perfectly without the additional piece but with the additional piece man it makes the tube way too long and when i go to use it and i'm just walking the blower tube catches the ground let me show you real quick so this is what it looks like without the tube extension Here's what I'm talking about. Just, you know, when it flops down like this, I don't know if it's gonna, if the video's gonna catch it, but when you're just walking, you know, a customer's calling you or something, you can freely walk around and this thing will wobble <laughs> and not hit the ground. However, when I do install the, the tube that comes with the blower, if I can ever get this on, there we go. Let me show you just what I am talking about. So, of course, with the correct pieces, it fits more snugly, but watch. I mean, it hits the ground almost instantaneously. Even if we set it to the setting two on this blower tube, and I'm 6'2", I'm pretty tall, right? It still hits. So you're walking down, it sometimes catches, and then it comes behind you. If they made a tube that would actually, like, telescope in, that would be a game changer. So um, Toro, for their second version of this blower, I think they really need to focus on creating some kind of tube design that will, that can be uh, pushed in just a bit. So that way you don't have to remove any extension pieces and mess with the, I think it has 730 CFM at uh, 120, 129 miles per hour. Let me 
check my phone after the split. Sorry, I was completely off. It's 730 CFM at 160 miles per hour. 129 is completely weak sauce. But yeah, man. Uh, other than that, it's it's been okay. It's been an okay blower. I gotta say that I do not like the th super thick padding. Um, even at I've I've wore this you know for over a month, a couple months now of using it, and broken in the padding. It's pretty durable. It doesn't really tear much. I haven't noticed any tears or anything. And I take pretty good care of my equipment. However, um, if you wanted to remove this bottom padding for some reason, I wanted to remove mine. I don't use the straps or you know harnesses or belt clips or anything if you wanted to remove this lower portion th you know the this upper portion ties into the lower portion so there's no way of removing just the bottom if you want to run just these harness uh, the ones that go over your shoulders so they're all tied in together so it's kind of a bummer because when i had my steel i removed my lower portion and just kept the padding. And I know I can go in and probably modify it, but I'd rather not. However, if there was an option where we could remove the harnesses on like a V2, that would be awesome too. Another thing I've noticed that happens a lot is when I store this blower on in the bed of my truck or inside of my vehicle, when you go to lift it out of the bed of the truck, you usually grab it right here. Now with two batteries, it gets pretty heavy. So your other hand automatically goes towards grabbing the handle. Sometimes when you forget, you grab the handle and squeeze the throttle, you know, like you grab it like this and you pull it out. Well, that will automatically turn on the unit, which is a problem because I mean, you're constantly turning it on, wasting the battery. I know it only happens for a couple seconds when you lift it out, but still, I mean, it could, lead to a potential safety concern I don't know but um, I'm just saying that I've noticed it happened to me quite often when I go to take the blower out I grab the throttle and I turn on the unit wasting my battery and my shirts usually right here gets like pressed on here and the fan makes a lot of noise so um, just something for Toro to consider maybe making a on off switch somewhere here where the unit won't turn on without hitting a switch. I don't know, that's just something to consider. So we talked a little bit about battery versus gas, blowers, especially backpack blowers. Uh, I showed you guys some footage of me using the backpack blower itself. Now, this is not a breakdown of the Toro 60 volt. I just wanted to share some information with you guys. I'm not an expert. I'm not a, a, a the best tool review person. I just enjoy using new tools and I'm thankful that Toro sent me this because I want to be honest with you guys and that's what we do on this channel. If I were to ever invest my money, uh, or actually I should say it this way, would I ever invest my money into purchasing this right here? Probably not and I'll tell you why. Because not only uh, do the batteries uh, cost $449 a piece. I have one here, one in the blower. That's nine hundred dollars just in a bat in two batteries for two batteries. The blower itself costs four hundred dollars. So you're over, you're you're right around thirteen hundred dollars for this. What you see right here, that doesn't even include the charger. So I'm not sure if you buy the blower if it comes with the charger or not. I highly doubt it. I think every everything that you buy from Toro is completely separate. Sometimes you can get packages from like Home Depot because. Toro, uh, Home Depot does sell Toro products. However, the commercial line, I haven't seen at any big box stores yet. I've only seen the residential line. So this is the commercial line. And would I spend $1,300 on a backpack blower? Absolutely not. I would rather buy a gas blower uh, because of the power. And of course you have to buy gas can and fuel and continually, you know, every year tune it up. That's not an issue for me. You know, I've been in the lawn care industry for uh, five years now professionally. I've been mowing lawns since I was a kid. I've always used gas powered blowers. So for me to spend $1,300 on a leaf blower is absolute no. Um, does that mean that there is no, like, should nobody buy this blower? Uh, absolutely not. I think there is a market for this blower. I think that uh, this blower is designed for a lot of commercial guys that cannot use backpack blowers. Ow, it hurts so bad on my knee here. 
Um, I think there is a market for backpack blowers, especially for those guys that are not allowed to use gas powered backpack blowers. Of course, um, it's gonna co come with a cost because battery equipment is super expensive. It's not cheap. So for me to tell you that you should buy this if you're just starting out, if you are doing a handful of properties, would be me lying. So I don't want anyone to think that you should go and purchase this product. A lot of brands are opening up now. They're starting to produce their own versions of battery backpack blowers. Uh, however, this one is specifically aimed at commercial users. So I would not recommend this for you if you're just a residential person mowing your own lawn, if you're a homeowner mowing your own lawn, if you're a small lawn care company that only services maybe 10, 20 accounts a week, I would not recommend this blower for you because I honestly think that your money can be spent uh, somewhere else and uh, invested into something that will actually uh, bring you more benefit. Um, not that this will not bring you a benefit. If you wanna go ahead and buy this and spend $1,300 on the setup, maybe you just wanna buy one battery and save $450, um, you know, by all means, go ahead and try it. Uh, maybe even go to your local Toro dealer. They might have one for you that you can test out. But I'd highly recommend that you watching right now go to your Toro dealer and test it out for yourself, even ask their opinion. Uh, you can really quickly tell if someone is just trying to sell you something or if someone is being honest. And when there's no negativity involved, when there's no uh, cons involved, when there's only pros and only people saying this is the greatest, this is the latest and greatest, stay away from them. Stay away from them. Don't listen to them. Because there's a lot of people out there that are trying to sell you products and I hope that I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not trying to sell you anything. Again, this is just my take on this blower. Um, if Toro didn't send this to me, I would never buy it. I would because it's way too expensive in my honest, in my opinion. Um, but again, it is a good blower. It does the job. It's powerful. It's got the turbo mode. It's got a battery indicator even on the handle. It's a nice unit. I mean, it, there's definitely been a lot of thought that comes into play when they created this. However, I still feel like uh, there are things that need to be improved. Like, you know, I feel like the, the backside here is even a little bit too bulky. Um, in my opinion, it needs to be cut and slimmed down halfway. That means they need to slim and change the design of their batteries. Uh, maybe even make an integrated battery without the removable battery specifically so that this unit is used without uh, removable batteries. I don't know. There's just, there's so many changes that can happen. Um, and not all these changes suit everybody. So if I were to choose, if I were to the design or product manager, whoever designs the Toro, you know, products, specifically the Toro backpack blowers, um, I would make my own changes. I would make the, the change on the two, make sure or give us an option to, uh, you know, uh, change the size of the two, slim this down a bit, uh, give us at least an option to go with, um, with none of these clips, you know, with, with a reduced amount of a fabric in the padding, maybe even just a removable back strap. I don't know, but, uh, you know, there's, there's things that I like, there's maybe things that you like, and there's maybe things that you disagree with me about, but, uh, that's just my take on the Toro Revolution 60 volt blower. I'm still gonna be using it um, to this day. You know, again, Toro sent it to me, so I might as well use it to its fullest potential. This is the, this is the problem with getting into battery products is these things right here are super expensive, super expensive. <laughs> if you're just starting out in your lawn care business, please do not buy battery products because you, I would, I would tell you to slowly try them out. Slowly, once in a while, buy them. But if you're looking to expand your lawn care business and go with, you know, and mow 30, 40, 60 accounts a week, forget it. Go with gas. If you're mowing maybe just 10 as a side business, yeah, you can dabble into, you know, battery equipment and test it out. See if it's right for you. Um, but I've talked, I've talked enough already. Um, again, I'm not trying to, like. This isn't a really a, a huge breakdown of a Toro 60 volt backpack blower. Uh, it wasn't intended for me to do uh, this review video. Um, 
I just want to talk about my experience so far with using this blower. I'm going to say my experience has been subpar. Um, it's not, it hasn't been the best. I've used gas powered blowers that were more efficient, um, more powerful, of course. But uh, again, you know, with backpack blowers, this is my very first backpack battery blower. So um, I can only say so much, right? I can only give so much feedback. Uh, so uh, yeah, I just thought I'd share that with you. And if you found any of this informative, please consider subscribing. And uh, let me know, let me know your opinion. Let me know if you would spend $1,300 on this setup right here. Actually, this doesn't even include a charger. So you'd have to purchase an additional charger, which can range from $150, maybe $200, $1,500 for a setup. You can buy lower amperage, um, our amp hour batteries that will cost that will reduce of course the total cost however it will reduce your runtime so think about that uh, just things to consider when purchasing something like this um, again just saying it out there it's not for everybody okay it's definitely not for homeowners that just mow their lawn once a week it's not for you it's not for residential guys that uh, are just starting out in their lawn care businesses but again if you've been just slowly mowing 10 lawns, you know, 10, 15, 20 lawns a week for four or five years. And this is just your like side, side gig. Um, you can slowly maybe try it out, maybe try it out. But uh, yeah, not for like people that do like 60 accounts a week. However, it is for those that don't have any options. I mean, this is the only option, right? Gas powered equipment is banned. What you gonna do? You have to go and invest your money into battery equipment. This is nothing compared to a battery commercial mower. Battery commercial mowers are now ranging 30, 40,000 price of a brand new vehicle. So uh, just uh, be thankful that you don't live in a market where gas powered equipment is banned.